Hello everyone. Our group project is credit card default prediction. And here are the names of the members of group. As we know, online shoppers have a wide range of payment methods to choose from. From left pictures, it is a survey from North American online shoppers. 42% of respondents stated they prefer to pay by credit card. Credit cards are the most popular payment method so far, ahead of electronic options such as PayPal and digital payments. As for the chart on the right, total U.S. credit card debt are at peak on December 2019, which includes both revolving and transaction balances, although a little decline in early 2020 as the pandemic hit it's still at a high level. Credit card spending is rising, but so are the default rates. Here's also a survey from Nerd Wallet, which conducted online. The parents of children under 18 are more likely to be in credit card debt than those without children under 18. We can see the details here about how long both groups think it will take them to pay off their credit card debt. As the total credit card debt continues to rise in U.S., it's important to analyze the causes. 50% of American families are living beyond their means and are spending more than they receive on a monthly basis. Of these families, 43% are turning to credit cards. As credit cards have a high annual percentage rate, this means many Americans are seeing their debt compound and grow at a staggering rate. So as a credit card is an unsecured credit instrument, the bank takes enforcement actions, such as decreased personal credit score, higher interest rates, which being withheld but these are only after the fact events, which means inefficiency and high risk. So many researchers have increasingly turned their attention to credit card default prediction analysis, but there are always limitations that need to improve. Therefore, our group tries to find a standard method which can not only reduce the cost, but also ensure the accuracy of the results. Our data site contains default payment, demographic factors, credit data, history of payment, and bill statements of credit card clients in Taiwan from April to September in 2005. We will use this data to predict whether cases like to default or not, and to predict froze time characteristic trends based on a combination of the application features as our research question. And our data set has 30,000 samples and 25 variables, including client ID, limit balance of credit card, gender, education level, marriage status, age, repayment status, amount of bill statement, amount of previous payment, and default payment. So, the next step, we will talk about the data preparation. For the data preparation part, first we check the missing values. Fortunately, there is no any missing values in our data site. But there are some abnormal values like 0, 5, and 6 from education, as well as 0 and 3 from marriage. There are meaningless values and do not represent any categories, so we dropped every row with those data. Since there are other categorical variables, to help our machine learning algorithms understand them, as well as have better performance on our data site, we converted those categorical variables into numerical data, and the help of one hot encoding by converting each categorical ver variable into a column and assign one or zero value to the column representing yes or no. Also, we check the outline for each row of data and sum them up. For this project, the outline here is data line size in the first quarter of minus 1.5 times the interquartile range, 
all great design the third quarter plus 1.5 times the inter quarter range. The finger here shows how many owners that each client has. Also, half of uh, uh, almost half of uh, clients have at least one quartile. However, we didn't drop or replace them as usual because we believe that those owners are signs of credit card default. Editing them may ruin our project. So we just kept them for the further prediction. At last, we check the distribution of label and find original labels are imbalanced. There are so many data in no default than in default, which has bad influence on the prediction. So we conducted the oversampling method to increase the data in the default category. The distribution of label before and after oversampling are listed here. After conducting oversampling method, distribution of two labels are balanced. Before building models, we created some realizations and tried to explore stories behind the idea. The first one is the distribution of credit card limit and the default situation. It's clear to see that clients with lower credit card limit are more likely to default. Also, we try to find why there are some relationships between categorical variables and default. But unfortunately, we didn't find any solid and obvious relationship between education and default, gender and default, as well as marriage and default. The last one is distribution of age and default. From this finger, there is a basic trend as the age increases, the default, non-default, as well as total number of credit card limit decrease. Near work, we try to find relationship between variable and default or non-default. But unfortunately, we didn't achieve what we want from this part. As the next part, when we build a model, we used feature selection to help us find related variables and test what we found from this part. Hi, Professor. I'm Guo Peng Liu. In this part, we tried five classification models to predict the credit card default. We used uh, logistic regression, SVM, decision tree, random forest, and the gradient boosting. In addition, then, we also tried four ways to improve the performance. We used uh, oversampling, feature selection, turning parameters, um, and at the same time, we also tried other algorithms. Finally, according to the table, we can conclude that um, the performance is significantly improved um, after turning the random forest model, which has the best performance in accuracy 0.76067 with the um, largest AUC value, um, 0 0.761. And the next part is about business suggestion, limitation, and feature work of our project. Hi, Professor. My name is Xue Ke. My part is business suggestion. For business suggestion, based on this model, the highest accuracy we gain is 76%, and it means that the chance of to identify unqualified applicants is 76%. Therefore, the objective of this project is to build supervised model for credit card default prediction. There are a lot of business suggestions we provide. First, increasing data size is an excellent way to help us get a better performance since it can minimize the impact of running errors, so we should collect more customer data. Two, the repayment status, especially for the first two stages, have a significant impact on the default prediction. Focusing on source metrics could help financial institutions to prevent potential risk. Three, most of defaults happened on users with for credit limits is between 0 to 100,000, and users with lower credit limit are likely to default. Thus, 
which suggests the financial institution should pay more attention to customer with lower quid limit. Four, financial institution should establish business and individual credit score in their database. Individual or company with more stable flow and excellent loan credit should get higher loan credit loans and better after their service. Five, financial institution should give people between 24 to 33 years of lower credit limit to avoid potential risks since they are more likely to default. Six, from the results of feature selection, pay one has a highly score which means it is most important variable in predicting credit fraud. This shows the repayment status of the last month is very important for predicting credit fraud. It could probably reflect the client's financial situation. We suggest the financial institution take these elements into consideration when evaluating the client credit. Last but not least, Financial institutions should reject lower credit applicants to avoid credit card default. This model could help them to prevent potential risks to get more profits by using machine learning. For limitation and future work, um, for limitation, based on this model on current data size, the highest accuracy we gain is 76%. We think this accuracy cannot support our goal since the likelihood of this model, faithfully predict the qualified applicants and unqualified applicants is about 23%. And I think that 23% is a large number for risk management, and it can result in dangerous outcomes if credit card companies off, offer loans to qualified applicants based on our model. There are several ways to improve performance in the future. First, increasing the sample size is an excellent way to improve performance because it can minimize the impact of random errors. Two, um, the growing features amount can also help to improve performance. Increasing amounts of features may result in adverse impacts such as overfitting problems. However, it can enhance the performance of this mode overall. Thirdly, utilizing another model for current data size is a potential solution to improve performance. Now, um, thank you for, sh for listening to our presentation. Thank you.